Hello there, welcome to another video on the channel today. Great to see you. In this video today, I'm going to take a look at uh, user and admin submissions for suspicious email content uh, and Teams content within Microsoft 365 in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. So this is a really powerful feature, one which I think you should all be aware of uh, because obviously uh, spam messages, spoofing, phishing, all that sort of stuff is ever, ever prevalent at the moment and something we all need to have a good awareness on the capabilities of within M365. Before we get to the video, please do remember to uh, give my uh, channel a subscribe. Consider becoming a member by clicking the join button and seeing the various perks that you can get uh, if you choose to support the channel. And do give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Right, on to the content, let's take a look at this feature. In Microsoft 365 Defender, administrators can use the submissions page to submit suspected spam, phish, URLs, legitimate email getting blocked, and email attachments to Microsoft. Now this article tells you all about how you do this, and we are gonna take a look at this within the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. A quick sort of look through the article. So in Microsoft 365 organizations with Exchange Online Mailboxes, admins can use the submissions page to submit messages, URLs, attachments, etc., for analysis. And there are two basic types of admin submissions. One, admin originated submissions. Admins identify and report messages, attachments, or URLs entities by selecting the submit to Microsoft for analysis from the tabs on the submissions page as described in the admin originated submissions section. And after the admin reports the entity, an entity, uh, an entry appears on the corresponding tab of the submissions page. The second type is an admin submission of user reported messages. So the built in user reporting experience is turned on and configured. Uh, user reported messages appear on the user reported tab on the submissions page and admins submit. Uh, or resubmit the messages to Microsoft from the user reported tab. So after the admin submits the message from the user reported tab, an entry is also created on the corresponding tab of the submissions page. For example, the emails tab. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like in the Defender portal. So we need to go uh, to security.microsoft.com. We need to be logged in as an appropriate administrator. A security administrator will do nicely. I'm in as a global admin here. Make sure you're using only the permissions you need just in time. And we need to go to actions and submissions. Next, go into submissions. Now we can see that this is broken down into a number of categories. Let's just close off the side panel now that we are where we want to be. And uh, we see emails at the top, so we can submit uh, email messages. We can submit Teams messages, email attachments, URLs, and here, we can see items reported by users. So in here, anything reported by users, we can re-report. So if I was a user and I reported uh, an email or, or anything else, it would appear in here and I could resubmit this. So same principle, really. Let's take a look at the user reported settings before we go any further. So there are some settings we can configure here. We'll open up a new tab for us here. And we can customize how users report messages in Outlook and Teams. Reported messages will be sent to the mailbox of your choice and appear on the submissions page. Okay, so Outlook, we can monitor reported messages in Outlook. Select an Outlook report button configuration. So use the built-in report button in Outlook. You can see that there. Uh, when a user reports an email, ask the user to confirm before reporting. So let's do that. Uh, show a success message after the message is reported. So we can do that and we can customize the messages, add our own text. We can also use a non-Microsoft add-in button if we want to, but uh, we'll go with the, the standard Outlook uh, one here. Microsoft Teams monitor reported messages in Microsoft Teams. So uh, that's certainly something I would like to have selected as well. Uh, reported message destinations, send reported message uh, to um, Microsoft and my reporting mailbox. 
you can choose both or uh, either or. So Microsoft only or My Reporting Mailbox only. So we have some choices there. And we can add an Exchange Online Mailbox to send reported messages to as well. Email notifications, the results email, which we can customize if we want to. Uh, if we want to do that, we get a little fly out panel there. So for phishing, and junk, and no threats found, we can uh, customize the email body results text and the email footer text. I'll not go as far as doing that just now. Um, but we can also customize sender and branding so we can specify a Microsoft 365 mailbox to use as the from address of email notifications. And if we do that, we can select the mailbox of our choice. Okay, if you don't specify a mailbox, then the notification will be sent from submissions at Microsoft.com. We can replace the Microsoft logo with your own organization's logo across all reporting experiences. So you can learn more about customizing your branding here. And reporting from quarantine, you can check to allow reporting for quarantined messages and only admins can report quarantined teams messages. Okay, so we've got some... Uh, good settings there. We can put user tags into place if we want to as well. So there are some settings here. Uh, we get a bit of an overview about uh, learning about differentiated protection for your most targeted employees. So uh, here we can see uh, in response to an increasingly sophisticated and targeted threat landscape, organizations need differentiated protection for their most visible and targeted employees. So why use priority account protection? Let's have a look. Priority C-suite and other targeted employees. So uh, high level targets, uh, very identifiable targets in organizations like your CEO, CTO, etc. You can tag them as priority accounts for highlighted visibility across defender services and ensure that these critical users receive differentiated protection with priority account protection. So that's an overview. Before you begin, we can see uh, some more information about end user productivity, security impact, implementation, rollback, and some top tips. So take the time to go through that as well. And there's some additional information that you can review some documentation with step-by-step -step guides to assist you, and a blog about uh, priority account protection on the Microsoft Defender for Office 365 blog. So. Here, uh, we can create tags, so a uh, priority account tag is there at the moment, and uh, we can edit this priority account uh, tag. That must be a, a default uh, built-in tag because that is not something I have created for sure. So let's take a look and edit that. And we can assign members to, to this priority account. So here we could add in our CTO, our C-suite level, uh, people in the organization, we can add members in as needed. Um, I won't do so right now because uh, it's it's not a real tenant, so I'm not going to change anything. But we can create other tags as well. So we can go in and define our tags, assign our members, and nice and simple. So tags are a very, very useful way of doing this. Uh, priority account protection, uh, we can basically select that on or off. So I think many organizations, large enterprises would certainly want this on uh, because C-suite level executives are, are very identifiable people. They're very easy to find. Uh, they're usually interviewed quite a lot. They'll be on LinkedIn. They'll be on uh, business articles. So very important that we manage and protect these these uh, individuals in any organization. And Microsoft Teams protection, we can configure the settings for Microsoft Teams protection as well. So here in the Microsoft Teams protection, we can configure zero hour auto purge or zap, and this will protect Teams, chats and channels using retroactive content scanning and removal. You can learn more about Zap from the link here. But what Zap essentially does is if content has reached channels or chats already, and uh, malicious content is not detected in it at the time that it has been sent and received, then it'll get through, but Zap continues to retroactively scan. And any updated information as uh, analytics are, are updated and uh, all that sort of stuff about threats, um, then it can go back and identify threats that it didn't know about and then take action. So uh, we can switch on Zap, 
We have quarantine policies that can be applied to content that Zap has removed. For malware, we can uh, choose between different policies, admin only access policy, default full access, or default full access with notification policy. So take the time to look at these policies um, for malware and high confidence phishing as well. You can set the policies there uh, the, to the level you want. So um, get familiar with those. And you can exclude certain participants and Zap will take action on chats and channels uh, with at least one participant that isn't on the exception list. So that's our... Um, uh, sort of uh, user reported settings there important to configure those before you proceed so remember that users will have that ability within their own outlook to hit report and uh, anything they report will end up here and then you can resubmit it to Microsoft but I'm going to focus in this demo on how you submit content yourself as an admin so we may have identified something in uh, an email mailbox or a Teams message, an email attachment or URL, and we want to forward that on and uh, take action on it. I'm going to use the example of an email in this case. Let's go into my emails at outlook.office.com. And as you can see, I have an email here which looks rather suspicious. It's from somebody called Bad Hacker. <laughs> <laughs> or hackerbad1972 at gmail.com. I certainly don't recognize that email address. Let's see what we've got. Click on this link to find out more. bbc.co.uk. I mean, it looks genuine enough, but I I really don't trust that. So I would, uh, I would want to uh, report that if I was a user. You can see here that there is a report button here. So we can just go on and uh, click on uh, our reporting options, report phishing, report junk. So... Let's go for phishing in this instance, and uh, there we go. So that has now been taken care of. Now what that's going to do potentially, it's going to remove the message. Is it going to put that in the junk messages? No, it isn't. Okay, so what can we do? Um, as an admin perspective, I might have actually inadvertently ruined the demo now by deleting that email. <laughs> but Let's see. Um, first and foremost, let's just go back into our portal and go into user reported. And has it reached here yet? No, it has not just yet. Give that one more refresh. It might take a time for it to reach here, but what I want to do is I want to submit an email um, as suspicious. So I can go in and submit to Microsoft for analysis. Now, I can choose the type. Drop down here is email, URL, or email attachment. I'm going to go for email. And you need to add the email network message ID. Where do you find this? Now, if I hadn't just inadvertently deleted the email, what I would have done here is I would have right clicked on it and I would have gone to uh, view uh, the uh, information about the uh, message details. That's it, yeah. So, here we go through and we need to be looking for specific content in here that we would include to submit uh, for this particular email. Now, you can't search in the browser-based version of uh, outlook.office.com. What we need to be searching for specifically, if we go back into this article, is we need to scroll down and if I get down to the right place, We need to submit uh, certain criteria from within the message, and I may have gone past it now. We're certain I had this highlighted, but um, it's in here. The, the instructions are in here, but as it happens, I just so happen to have this content already open. So from um, my Microsoft Outlook, I do actually have this message open already. And what I did was I right clicked on it and I could get into this text edit view, which is much more uh, searchable if you like. So we can go into here and we can edit and we can uh, find in here. And what I want to do is I want to paste in, and this is what I was looking for. Uh, the X-MS Exchange Organization Network Message ID. And it's highlighted that, 
right here. This is what the submission wants, and it tells you in the article um, exactly what to search for. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back, and, and just to actually prove the point here, if I find on page here, oh, it's already in there and remembered. There you go. It tells you to search for that content in your uh, submission. So let's go back to su the submission and I am going to paste that in there. What you will have to watch out for is um, that you can only do this for 30 days, the totals for the past 30 days. If you try and select an email that is older than 30 days, you'll get an error here informing you of that. Okay, so you can add the email uh, network message ID or you can upload the, upload the file uh, in uh, MSG or EML format. We can choose at least one recipient who had the issue. So in that case, that was me. And what we need to do here is we need to select the reason for submitting to Microsoft. You can either put, it should not have been blocked, it, meaning it's a false positive, or it should have been blocked, meaning it's a false negative. It got through and it wasn't detected. This email should have been categorized as fish, malware, or spam, making the appropriate decision there. And then we can choose to block all emails from this sender or domain. Uh, so sender or domain there. We'll go for sender in this instance. And we can remove uh, block entry after 30 days or uh, whatever is the most appropriate option. Uh, in that section. So after this time, entries allowed for URL attachment and senders will be removed. Spoofed domain senders and impersonating senders that are allowed never expire. You can put in an optional block entry note, uh, and when you're happy with everything you've done here, you can click on Submit. Now, uh, just as an obvious um, disclaimer that I'm sure you've already realized here, is that email account, that Gmail account, was actually created by me. I created that hacker bad 1972 Gmail account and sent myself an email. So just to demonstrate the process. So we have submitted our submission and uh, Microsoft is telling us here that they'll get back to us as soon as the submission has been analyzed. Any updates will be shown on the submissions page. And there are some related tasks that you can do here. So there we go. Click OK and there we go. We've got our submission uh, all there. So we can see it there. The submission name is Amazing Opportunity, which is the title of the email. The sender was hackerbad1972 at gmail.com, submitted by myself. The date, the reason, the status, and the result that it's under investigation. And we can click on it, get the flyout panel, get more details on the uh, submission that we've put into place and we can open the email entity, we can take action and so on and so forth. Let's just have one final look in the user reported and see if anything has come into here. Yes, there it is. It's uh, the one that we submitted as a user has appeared here as well. So what we could do is we could click on this and then we could take action on it, um, go into it. We could uh, submit to Microsoft for analysis, mark as and notify, view the alert, and uh, and, and open the email entity, and uh, and take all the appropriate actions. So there you go. That is it from the perspective of reporting as a user, and also submitting as an administrator. Really cool stuff. There you go, cool stuff indeed. Something every administrator should know, something every user should know as well in your organization. How to report these suspicious messages. Should they get through? Should there be a false positive or a false negative? We need to know uh, from a user and an admin perspective what can be done about these messages and the steps we can take to protect ourselves. Give me a massive thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. As always, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button if you're going to stick around and watch more content. It's massively appreciated. And of course, you can click the join button to become a member of the channel as well. Lovely stuff. Right, that's it for another video. You all take care. I'll see you real soon. Bye.